In the book of Leviticus, God gives us a list of unclean animals that are not suitable for consumption. The one commonality all the unclean animals have that are listed within the scriptures is that they are all bottom feeders. Even secular science can tell us that consuming animals that are bottom feeders is not optimal for the human body when it comes to our physical health. Now there is something very peculiar about a specific unclean animal listed in the scriptures, and that is the pig. The Bible does not give us specific reasons as to why the swine is unclean, besides broadly stating that it is unclean and an abomination. In the Bible, the definition of the word unclean means something that is impure and unfit for human consumption. The word abomination means something that is detestable, defiled, and offensive to God and His character. The word abomination is a very serious word within the scriptures and is typically used to describe something God hates, such as demonic spirits as described within the book of Kings. The book of Isaiah shows us just how much God detests the consumption of swine. The book of Isaiah chapter 66 verse 16, For by fire and by his word will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the mists, eating swine's flesh and the abomination and the mouse, shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. I believe the Bible, apocryphal books, mythology, and observable science will possibly give us the specific reason as to why God forbids the consumption of swine's flesh. There is a very interesting account Jesus had that involved demons and pigs. In the book of Luke, Jesus encounters a man possessed by many demonic spirits who called themselves the collective name Legion, for they are many. The demonic spirits fear that Jesus will drive them out of the world and into the abyss. So they beg him instead to cast him into a herd of swine on a nearby hill, which he does. The pigs then rush into the sea and are drowned. My question is, if the swine is one of God's animals that he himself created, then why would he be okay with defiling his own animals by allowing unclean spirits to enter the swine? Unless there's a good possibility, the swine was not created by God himself but is a product of genetic defilement caused by the rebellious fallen ones. Hence why God didn't think twice about sending legion into the herd of swine. I also found it interesting that pigs are the only animals that were able to become vessels for demonic spirits within the scriptures, which made me wonder if there is something genetically similar about swine to the human body. And as disturbing and strange as it sounds, there is. Secular science is starting to come to the odd conclusion that there is a genetic link between the DNA of swine and humans. You're a pig is a common insult, but interestingly, there are a number of similarities between humans and pigs. These include various anatomic and physiological traits, such as organ placement and often size and function, skin similarities, and some disease progression. A pig resembles a human body in many ways, including fat distribution, eye color, and cover of hair. For this reason, pigs have been used in medical research for over 30 years, and what's known as a translational research model. This means that if something works in a pig, it has a higher possibility of working in a human. Stomach, spleen, bile duct systems, small intestines, kidneys, bladder, and the remainder of the abdominal organs found in the pigs are basically the same as found in humans. Swine organs are often used in human bodies during certain surgeries. In fact, several biotech companies are now developing genetically modified pig organs for successful human transplants. For over 30 years, pig valves have been successfully planted in humans. Interestingly, a pig's heart is similar in size, weight, and structure to a human heart. The operators at crematoriums often cannot stand the smell of cooked pork. According to the operators themselves, the smell of burning bodies 
smells identical to a burnt pork roast. Many cannibals throughout history often describe the taste of human flesh to the taste of pork. Cannibal tribes that have existed within the Pacific Islands refer to human flesh as a long pig. The term long pig is a translation of a phrase used in the Pacific Islands for human flesh. Early explorers and missionaries who contacted cannibal Pacific Islanders were told that human flesh tasted similar to pork, thus the term long pig. Запрещена свинина, запрещена она еще в Библии. И свиньи не чиста она для вас, не ешьте мясо их и к трупам их не прикасайтесь. Почему была запрещена свинина всегда на всем протяжении веков во всех религиях? Потому что мышечная ткань свинины абсолютно идентична мышечной ткани человека. Это очень важно. Поедание свинины – это форма каннибализма. Это очень важно. Все операции по пересадке сердца профессор Бернард, который делал в Ганнесбурге, первый британский профессор, который делал пересадку сердца, он делал только на свиньях. Запрещена свинина, потому что это форма каннибализма. И все тут. Дальше. Свиное мясо. Как с медицины доказано, у меня мама 30 лет преподавала в медицинской академии, была старшим преподавателем. Свиное мясо разрушает клеточную ткань печени. Стопроцентно. Доказано всей медициной. In the Islamic religious book known as the Quran, swine is also considered an abomination and not fit for human consumption. In the Quran, it states that humans who transgressed Allah were cursed and punished by being transformed into pigs and apes. The Quran, Al-Maidah, chapter 5, verse 60. Say, shall I point out to you something much worse than this? As judged by the treatment it received from Allah, those who incurred the curse of Allah and His wrath, those of whom some He transformed into apes and swine, those who worshipped evil, these are many times worse in rank and far more astray from the even path. I myself do not believe God turned a group of humans into swine, but I do believe that it's quite possible the accuser and the fallen angelic beings created the hybrid abomination known as the swine. The apocryphal book of the giants tells us that the fallen angels created genetic abominations from both humans and animals. The 200 angels chose animals on which to perform unnatural acts, including presumably humans. IQ 23 Fragment 1 plus 6 200 donkeys, 200 asses, 200 rams of the flock, 200 goats, 200 beasts of the field, from every animal, from every bird, for miscegenation. The outcome of the demonic corruption was violence, perversion, and a brood of monstrous beings. 4Q531 Fragment 2 4Q531 Fragment 2 They defiled, they begot giants and monsters. They begot and behold, all the earth was corrupted, with its blood and by the hand of giants, which did not suffice for them, and, and they were seeking to devour many. The monsters attacked it. The book of Jasher retells the origin of human-animal hybrids as mentioned in the book of Enoch and the book of the giants. The book of Jasher, chapter 4, verse 18. The sons of men in those days took from cattle of the earth, the beasts of the field, and the fowls of the air, and taught the mixture of animals of one species with the other, in order therewith to provoke the Lord. And God saw the whole earth, and it was corrupted. For all flesh had corrupted its way upon the earth, all men and all animals. We can see evidence of the genetic tampering of humans and animals in mythological stories such as the story of Circe, the daughter of the sun god Helios that can be found within Greek mythology. Circe was a sorceress known for her ability to transform men into animals. In Homer's Odyssey, Circe invites Ulysses and his men to a feast. During the meal, she drugs the men and turns them into pigs. Through the use of drugs and a magic wand or staff, she would transform her enemies. 
or those who offended her into animals such as the pigs. With all this evidence in mind, it's beginning to become quite clear as to why God finds the consumption of swine to be so detestable. The genetic similarities between humans and pigs is uncanny. There are even secular scientists that believe that swine are the evolutionary ancestors of humans. However, there seems to be more evidence to suggest that the opposite is true. The ancestors of pigs could be a tribe of ancient humans that were transformed into pigs by the fallen ones through the genetic amalgamation of man and beast. Or perhaps the swine was created from the DNA of man to satisfy the destructive appetites of the Nephilim, the bastard children of fallen angels and sinful women. The wisdom of Solomon tells us that God hates those who do evil works, which includes the consumption of human flesh, whom thou hatest for doing most odious works of witchcrafts and wicked sacrifices, and also those merciless murders of children and devourers of man's flesh and the feasts of blood. If swine are the animal hybrid descendants of a tribe of ancient humans, then it makes sense as to why God finds the consumption of swine to be a sin. And if Satan truly is the god of this world, then it also makes sense as to why swine is found in the ingredients of many of our products, which includes both food and hygiene products, such as processed food, medicines, toothpaste, and many more products. The accuser wants us to defile our temples. I do not condemn those who consume pork, however, I do encourage everyone to test all things, like the Bible says, which includes what we consume on a day-to-day -day basis. If you need more evidence to prove that God's commandments are holy, and they are for our own physical and spiritual benefit, then pray and honestly ask the Spirit of Truth to guide you to the answers that you seek concerning God's commandments. Jesus Christ himself followed God's dietary laws. We are told to follow Christ in every way, which includes how he conducted himself, his morality, the things he consumed, and every other aspect of Christ. And every other aspect of Christ is to be observed and applied into your life, because he is the perfect example of how to be spiritually, mentally, and physically healthy. Thank you guys so much for watching this. I truly hope this video was fruitful and I hope this inspired you to pray and do your own research when it comes to the topic of God's dietary laws. If you enjoyed this and would like to support this channel, I do have a patron. The link for that will be in the bio below. Again, thank you so much for watching. Please let me know your honest thoughts in the comment section below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Peace and blessings and I will see you soon.